if you find adventure at the click of a button, or from the turn of a page, or the casting of a die. Join your hosts, Conniff and Shiloh, on an unforgettable journey. Questing the Multiverse. Shiloh, it's very festive behind you today, but in a classy way. I like your Halloween candles. Thank you. Yeah, for the listener, I've purchased... Uh, it's a trio of... You can find them on Amazon. I'm not plugging <laughs> Amazon by any stretch of the imagination, but... Uh, yeah, they're they're LED little holiday candles, and I'm I'm like... Uh, I'm digging them. I'm thinking yeah. I'm going to get ones for each season and maybe just have some that are just for every day. I don't know. Maybe I can find some ones with dragons or, I don't know, robots or something on them. Robot. Dragons and robots. Oh, my. Dra yeah. Dragons and robots. That would be a good Dragons. Uh, no. Robots robotic riding dragons. dragons or robotic dragons. Robots yeah. fighting dragons. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good old classic, like one of them B horror movies. Yeah, like a Roger Corman movie. Yeah, just something real, real low budget, real cheesy. If yep. you're listening on YouTube, you can see the candles for yourself, listener. So I'm basically repeating what you're doing currently. Is he? <laughs> uh, but today, Shiloh was a very rainy day. And going mm -hmm. into this episode's going to release the day before Halloween. It's like in in uh, the Midwest, it just skips like the last half of fall, and so it's always like summer, 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 and then okay, here's some fall, and it's like all right, we're done with this, just skip straight to winter. And I don't like that because I like fall, but today yeah. it went from you know the last week being like seventies to like thirties. <laughs> It's like what? <laughs> so well, it's still seventy something here. So and I know it's supposed to get cold um, gotcha. soon. So if it's if it's cold in Missouri, it'll be cold here by tomorrow or Tuesday. So yeah, yeah. I'm the uh, I'm the precursor for you. So mm -hmm. so I see you put something up in these notes. Best mm -hmm. Halloween costume you've adorned. And I notice neither of us are in dressed up in costumes for this recording. We're too professional or no fun. I don't know. Too too much of a, a grunt. I'm both. Yeah. Well. Yeah. No fun and professional, I suppose. In your previous unprofessional and more fun life, <laughs> what Dude. has been the best costume you've ever adorned, Shiloh? Let me try to remember. So I, I do remember, and I think I mentioned this at, at work the other day we were talking about halloween costumes and the best one that i can remember was as as a kid my mother made us the the three boys anyway uh, before my youngest uh, my i'm the oldest of four my okay. sisters the the baby no so i think my mother we kind of the three boys just kind of ran her through the ringer and uh <laughs> by then she had no stamina left to <laughs> to make my sister halloween costumes so she just pretty much just like well, okay we'll just get that for you uh but my mother made uh i was infatuated with zorro oh, okay. uh, as a kid and um i might have told this story in gg party chat i don't know i can't remember but um me neither uh, yeah, she made me a, uh, I mean, it was a very simple, like, little black outfit, you know, just pants and a little shirt with a cape and then mm. just a Zorro mask. Like, it was the easiest thing. I don't even remember if I had a, a sword of any kind. They might have just given me, like, a, a you know, like a cardboard cutout with some aluminum foil wrapped around it at that, point. that was the but, old uh, way to do it <laughs> yep this is your sword great this is awesome it's plus two um but uh yeah and i i was infatuated and i would just ran around like i'm zorro so whatever that's happened probably, to zorro like 
Is that just yeah, an IP just, that just... I think it got remade, didn't it, with Antonio Banderas or something? Or maybe I'm just making that up. Uh, but I'm talking about, yeah. like, the Richard Hamilton, I think it was the original Zorro. I can't remember, but back in the 80s. And, uh, yeah, I just like the fact that he would bust in and try to romance women and then their <laughs> husbands or something would come in. And he'd be like, what are you doing? And he'd be like, oh, I must go. And he would jump out, you know. When, the cape billowing. <laughs> yeah, he would, just, he would just jump off the balcony with the cape billowing and just laying on his horse and... You know, oh, I can't remember his his horse's name. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> um, and he was like, ta ta. He would just you know ride off into the sunset or whatever. They don't make what those about like you? they used to. So mine is a lot less exciting. But when I was a kid, and we're talking like between the ages of like six and ten or something, I had this Simba lion costume from The Lion King that had the tail, it was the full-blown thing with, like, the cloth hood, but then, like, an actual, like, mask to it that looked pretty mm -hmm. neat. Um, and that was my favorite. But I also just like to swing the tail around and hit my sister with it, so. <laughs> of course, you know. <laughs> I want yeah, that. we gotta do that. Uh, so Zora's horse was evidently named Tornado. Tor that's a good horse name. Well. Tornado. Here, yeah, tornado. It's a Frisian horse named Arian was the real horse. Oh. In the legend of Zorro. Zorro. Uh, yeah. Nice. So, great, great, great uh, fun facts. So fun facts about Zorro. Again, like one of those classic characters. The kids don't even know who Zorro is anymore. They just mm -mm. don't haven't done anything with the IP or whatever. Was he like the? conquistador style of james bond type character i Maybe guess you would call him that yeah i mean i always thought it was fun that he had a rapier and then he would uh do the z you know oh, yeah <laughs> it, closest thing in modern day to that would be for would be v for v from vendetta when he would do the v, v, I mean, he'd do the oh, v oh yeah i don't know if that was a callback to zorro or what but hmm. i mean that V for Vendetta, that's a graphic novel that's got some age to it. I don't remember when that was originally put out. but Well, we are coming up on Remember, Remember, the 5th of November, the Gunpowder yep. Treason and Plot. So, yep. yep. It's I also my sobriety it. date, which is a Congrats. Funny... Yeah, that'll be seven years. Seven long years. I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> seven good years, <laughs> I'm sure. It's even much better years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, I think that that was because that's I have to, that reminds me I'm gonna have to watch that movie because that is one of my. Well, Natalie Portman, who plays V, again. I don't remember. No. Uh, well, the voice. Uh, yeah, even well, that I don't remember. It's I just, of course, like I remember Natalie Portman because yeah. Star Wars, and uh, she shaves her head, and so that was very. Not Star Wars E. <laughs> you know, no longer she's Padme Amidala. Oh, it's Hugo Skywalker. Weaving. Oh. Wait, the a the actor or the voice? Or both? Um Yeah, it says uh, James Purefoy was originally cast as V but was, but was replaced by Weaving six weeks into production. Interesting. Uh, Isn't he's the he was Agent Smith in Matrix, and he was Elrond in mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings. Yep. Hmm. Some interesting roles he's got there. I need to watch yeah. the Matrix again, too. I got a lot of stuff to catch up on. That is the nice thing about this holiday season that we are upon. And, uh, listener, if you're not from the U.S., of course, like, your holidays are going to look a little different, especially if you're in, like, the APAC region as opposed to Europe. But... In the U.S., we basically call anywhere like mid-October to the end of the year as holiday season because you've got, you know, Halloween and then you've got Thanksgiving and then you've got Christmas. And they just like I'm pretty sure if I walk to Walmart tomorrow, it's still, you know, Halloween hasn't happened yet. I bet you they're starting to put up the Christmas stuff. <laughs> you know, it's. Oh, well, yeah. It'll be Thanksgiving <laughs> stuff, turkey stuff everywhere. And then but then that'll 
quickly fall oh, yeah. in a few days after that it'll be Christmas or it'll be a conglomeration of both mm-hmm. probably yeah so it goes real quick but um you know that's the consumeristic society we've got here but yeah i mean this this time of year though it's like it's more like I, I still play a lot of video games but like i'll end up playing more board games more stuff with family and people um but then like i also read more and then i also will watch like shows or something i did start two shows uh the first is the one piece live action so one piece is one of the big three animes uh, which was Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece. Uh, they were huge in the 90s, early late 90s, I mean, you know, early 2000s. And so they have earned that, you know, designation as the big three. Well, One Piece is like the biggest of those three at over 1,000 episodes. So, you know, like Jeez. some of these shows you're like, and they're like 20-minute episodes, so it's not like full-blown hour long, but like, that's still a thousand episodes at 20 minutes each. You know, yeah. what is that? Like 20,000, 200,000. I don't know. Math's hard. I don't, it's, it's the weekend. I don't math on the weekend, mm. but, but you know, like, so it's this massive anime. And so they create Netflix is doing this. This is like bleeding into my, what I've been up to by the way, cause I haven't been up to much. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, but I did start this one piece live action and I don't have the allegiance to the anime that like one of my coworkers and her uh, and her husband are like huge One Piece fans, um, and you know there's several people that have watched the show the anime for decades now. I don't have that allegiance, so I fired up the um, the live action as someone who has only ever seen like 20 of the actual anime episodes, and I'm really enjoying it. Like it's it is like a more comedic style of story but it's about pirates and these pirates are like just weird pirates you know like one is like a clown pirate um one of the in the first episode the main antagonist is like this marine commander with an axe for a hand instead of a hand you know it's it's just like wacky stuff like that that they but they did a really good job of translating you know those wacky anime concepts into live action so i definitely recommend it probably more so to people who don't have an anime background and just want to watch something fun and silly that's like also got some good action uh and then i also started cobra kai because i've been taking my son to his taekwondo classes uh and that led me down the road of reminiscing on when i used to study Kyoshikin karate which is a very full contact type of karate uh it was a big part of my life and then i went you know i was my road diverted between karate and um marching band <laughs> and i went the marching band route like a nerd when mm. I, you know so so i'm like well you know what when my son gets old enough like he'll join the adult class and then maybe i could start it at the same time it would be one a good workout and two a good um, thing for us to kind of do together but beyond that like I was like oh, I'll check out Cobra Kai because I remember when it came out people were saying like it was pretty great you know and I've watched all the Karate Kids one two certainly one and two with um, Daniel and Mr. Miyagi but I don't remember if they did a third one with there was like a female I don't know but then they Didn't did say. do a Jackie Chan and um, Will Smith's kid as one so long time ago. Hmm. but cobra kai is uh playing into the og story when johnny gets you know he gets kicked in the face with the crane kick by danielson oh. yeah, in the tournament vicious. yeah so it's very good but yeah that's what i've been up to minus that like playing a lot of magic the gathering uh both online and then with some friends in person and then playing Final Fantasy fourteen. So my video game playing has been primarily Final Fantasy fourteen, with uh, a little bit of Forza here and there. But like, I mean, I was telling Tempest, and I've told you, like, once I was like, once I started the sub for Final Fantasy fourteen, I was pretty much I was like, yep, I'm going in on this and just gonna 
level uh and you know for you and i like we've got dawn trail coming in next summer but more importantly we've got some excuse me, Xbox friends that want to dive into something other than ESO, you know, since that's all they've played for. Although, really, that's not all they played. That's all the options were for console MMO on Xbox. So yeah. that's a that's a big thing, and it's going to be a big thing for us to have, um, you know, some of our longtime ESO friends actually have something else they can dive into. So... Yep. That's all I've been up to. What about you, you fine specimen? Silver Fox? Yep, that's me. <laughs> Fox so silver. <laughs> I've been up to a, a little bit of Final Fantasy fourteen. Been uh, leveling my warrior job. And that just kind of... The way you... When you've gotten through a certain chunk of content, the only real decent way there's no it's really hard to power level like go hard and power level a job like get it to i guess 50 you can in like two days or something yeah it's yeah. just that's really hard to do in final fantasy um but the quickest way is to really just kind of stay on it and try to do as many daily roulettes as you can um yeah. and get you get two or three levels here in a day and then just kind of go from there and then that that I mean, it, it's easier to do when you're lower level, but when you get into the 50s and what I just got up to was 60, then then everything starts to slow down pretty pretty drastically. So, gotcha. uh, but I did get to 60 on my warrior, so I've been able Congrats. to kind of yeah, so I've been able to uh, tank some of the upper tiered, I guess, sort of the beginning upper tiered dungeons and. That's been interesting to kind of pug those and learn kind of on the fly because when you're the tank, you're both leading the group because everyone kind of <laughs> follows suit and um, yeah. you're almost expected to know the mechanics. And when you don't, you know, I generally don't preface it like this is my first time playing it because they'll probably know that I'm. it's not my first time, but in actuality, <laughs> it is my first time tanking yeah. some of these things. So, um yeah, so I've been kind of, it's been interesting to be like, oh yeah, I remember this dungeon, sort of, but but it was always from generally either a DPS or healer perspective, which is totally different than a tank pers- perspective. So um, that, we uh, decided to form a new uh, company in New World today, actually, at uh, Weevil and Ardeth and uh, nice. Wataru. Uh, and I kind of joined up forces and decided, you know, we should just try to go ahead and try to form a new company just so we can, because uh, our friend Carb had set up a little uh, company a for us. And, one. Yeah. yeah, kind of a placeholder. And we decided to go ahead and start up the Council of the Owl. So that is our our company nice. name. And we've decided to, uh, yeah, we're going to try to recruit some more people and get... Uh, just get some more players so we can do some expeditions and because there's some there's a ton of fun stuff to do in the game but once because it's not a game that's 10 years plus like like guild wars 2 like final fantasy 14 like wow um it doesn't have as much content um so once you go through a lot of the story stuff you're like well okay well and it's in the past it has been a pretty hard core pvp centric game which is still there obviously but uh, th- there's still a lot to do on the uh pve side that we haven't done so we decided well, we'll try to get some people some newer players in and yeah so it's been fun to kind of reshuffle that and kind of get involved with that so just got done doing uh some expeditions uh with with some of the crew and uh, had to had to leave a little prematurely, but that's okay because <laughs> I was like, "Oh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get back to it eventually." So, um, yeah, that, that, that's really about it. Just that and work, and uh, yeah, can't really think of anything else. So nice, a solid week of time. So yeah, 
Well, let's dive into the news. We've got two things. Um, one is more of just sort of a hype. Well, I guess they're both kind of hype, but one is not coming until 2024. And so this first yeah. piece of news is we did finally get the release date for the Fallout TV series that's going to premiere on Prime, and that's going to be April 12th of 2024. Mm -hmm. that's big uh and i remember when you and i saw this and we had a little chat you know it's like man like maybe we should download 76 again or on the pc <laughs> and play it i really like so i think i told you this but for our listener like i wouldn't go and like transfer characters you know f like from a console to a pc for like any game the one exception to that is if I could transfer my Fallout 76 account progression <laughs> to PC. Mm -hmm. Because, and this is a little more of like a sentimental reason than simply like just progress and having to start over. But do you remember that guy that we used, that we met in ESO? His name was Half Baked. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he ended up passing away like a few years ago. I think like 2021, 2022 or something. And what I remember, you know, like leading up to that, like he was big into ESO. We met him in that Omni Prodigy Guild and ESO on Xbox. And then, um, you know, just a good guy, like very like relaxed. And then he, once 76 came out, he kind of got into that. But he didn't just get into that like a casual player. Like he was like full blown, like king of the wasteland style player and i remember yeah. one time we were getting back into it and he was like just a hundred percent like level 600 all, all of a sudden while the rest of us are like 50 to 100 he's level 600 he had like legitimately like max caps like a million of each of the resources like concrete and steel and stuff like that like a ton of these like serum recipes so like marsupial serum or um bird bones or i don't remember what they all were yeah, and so like a really ton of stuff and he hooked all of us up with like good weapons that were like legendary god rolls you know all this stuff i think he probably had duped them through one of the many different duping methods that has popped up uh, off and on in that game some people you know say what you will about that i whatever he just loved that game and was just deep into it and so it's like I've got stuff from him. Like I have rifles from him. Like he, my main rifle that was a um, a bloodied fixer was from him. And so like I've got all the sentimental stuff that's kind of like his, la you know, as silly as it sounds like his legacy in the gaming world. Yeah, his gaming legacy, I yeah. suppose. So I would love to put that into, like I would want to transfer my character so I could keep all that and i know i can keep like it's all there on xbox you know but yeah. it's just the mindset of it like i'd love to still have that and use it on a you know but play on pc instead so but yeah, yeah. so uh 2024 i love fallout you love fallout we all love fallout <laughs> i hope this tv series is good i mean we've been getting some decent remakes or adaptions as of late so like the last of us we talked arcane edge runners mm -hmm. the witchers don't ask me but like you know other stuff has been decent mm -hmm. so i've got high hopes for this fallout show Be yeah curious. and they they've nailed the the opening little trailer bit or whatever mm -hmm. they showed with the cog yep. wheel and the va vault um looks very very fallout so uh, i'm excited about it and in fact i when we were talking about downloading 76 i went ahead and did that and uh, <laughs> i went ahead so, and did that thing <laughs> yeah because i have a so for listeners i because i told you i finally bought finally bought a uh two terabyte um external hard drive which my computer only had 500 gigabyte SSD. Okay. So now I've got that plus a two terabyte SSD hard drive. And that's made my gaming stuff a lot better because I don't have to juggle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Reinstalling and uninstalling Baldur's Gate or 
uninstalling Guild Wars 2 if I want it. You know, it's just a pain in the butt. Because generally, I only have four or five games on my computer, but when you only have 500 gigabytes, Mm -hmm. something's got to go because you generally play bigger games. So, Well, and you can leave, like, the multiplayer ones on the internal drive so it'll fat be faster but then these yeah. like single player games you're just like yeah who cares if it loads longer you know yeah Baldur's gate 3 is on the hard drive yeah it's the external hard drive and that will be but my mmos are on my internal hard drive so yeah. so i guess i did nice. that the right way then yeah so, well yeah. it's it's because it's like in some games these days like starfield i don't think starfield can work on an a hard drive like it has to be on that ssd um especially internal just because of the Mm -hmm. way the game's built and and you're going to see that you know more and more but for you and i like some of these older games are like oh it'd be fun to get back to like yeah you just throw it on that hard drive and yeah whatever um yep okay so this next one do you want to talk about through the veil yeah so this is kind of Earlier this week, it came out of nowhere um, that uh, Guild Wars 2 is announced through the veil and that the new zone launches November 7th, which is right around the corner. <laughs> There's no stop weapon, in the holiday train. <laughs> yeah, followed by a weapon uh, proliferation beta, which I'm guessing is another one of the betas where we get to try out weapons that are, worn, are currently locked behind certain... Classes, yeah. Classes, I'm guessing. Um, there was one yes. earlier in the summer that I partook of briefly. I didn't really get mm. too full into it, but um, it's interesting because you could put um, weapons you currently just can't play on a thief. You could put on a thief. So, yep. The I, elementalist I will get a pistol and. Uh, this this list says like the ranger gets dual maces, thief gets an mm-hmm. axe, guardian gets dual pistols, mm-hmm. revenant gets scepter, warrior gets stave, engineer gets short bow, elementalist gets pistol, mesmer rifles, and then necro double swords. Yeah, elemental. It, the ones that stick out to me are a mesmer with a rifle. <laughs> it's <laughs> really dangerous. Um, like a chronomancer, that would make. Or, or a mirage with the rifle it's yeah pretty terrifying um because they can already just at least on my mirage the build that i have it just kind of phase in and out and nothing can barely touch you as long as you stay out of range yeah. so um that and the elementalist with the pistol <laughs> should be interesting i'm gonna run that uh because well it's because i also you know these others are specifying like dual pistols dual Mm -hmm. uh double swords double axe so yeah warrior with a staff would be interesting too because you have warrior doesn't really have a support type of spec other than their banners and things like that i wonder Um, if it's going to be more like the dare uh it it could be more like the revenant or in the daredevil what more of a attacky kind of staff like a martial weapon rather than Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. probably but it would be interesting because in on the um on the guardian the staff is a pretty defensive uh support because you can actually heal but i doubt they'll do they'll go that route on a warrior and just be kind of weird but anyway uh but yeah so this is interesting because it'll they're opening up the last little bit of the zone for secrets of the obscure (laughs) And they'll have an entire new um, mastery tree. So we'll get to do that. And uh, so they'll be sending players into Naos, the realm of dreams. You bring the fight to the ger- demonic, I almost said Germanic, demonic <laughs> cryptus and further the story of their invasion of Tyria. So just continuing on the Secrets of the Obscure story. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I wonder if this is like outside of the mists, which is really the PVP zones, Mistlock Sanctuary, Mm -hmm. uh, Fractals, I suppose. This is like the first like, and those don't count, but this is the first Overland map that is not in Tyria technically. So that should be Mm. interesting to see how they, Mm -hmm. one, where they put it in the map. I haven't logged into Guild Wars 2 in a bit ever since finishing, ever since we did that episode and I, you know, I had finished the entire story. But 
I will be for this, you know, because I just I want I'll want to finish the story, and then get mm -hmm. back to Final Fantasy fourteen. But I think <laughs> it's it's interesting to be in this sort of state with Guild Wars two now because we you know we spent the last entire year playing catch up, playing, yeah, and so now you know this new stuff comes out back. Like, oh yeah, let's play this, get through the story, and then you know come back to it off and on or whatever. So yeah, it is an interesting. Uh scenario i we're basically becoming the most the you know a typical older guild wars 2 player that yeah <laughs> probably plays when stuff comes out and or when they feel the itch and then they just kind of go away for a while and then come yeah. back and but that's kind of the beauty of the game it's yeah. very it's very it just leans that way to to play that way so yeah very friendly um, on that on that front so mm-hmm all right, are you ready, Shiloh? For this is gonna this is gonna be a very short <laughs> video game face off. I I you have think a, so. Yeah, I think so, and I'll tell you why once we hit it. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for: video game face off. The reason this is going to be a very short one is because I thought Assassin's Creed 3 was the final game in the Ezio trilogy. But I was wrong. Apparently, Assassin's Creed 3 is the colonial one, which was a mm -hmm. good game. It was, And it did something new, you know, because again, as I just mentioned, like the Ezio trilogy was AC1, AC2 and then Revelations, I guess. Um, and so Revelations was that, you know, big, I think it was just like your, like the big moment, or maybe I'm thinking of AC2. Those, they all kind of run together. But AC3 comes out and it's a new setting. And so now we're finally getting that sort of, um, rev ironic, revelation that the game is as much in the real world with the whole I don't and I'm my AC lore is very rusty whatever that yeah. system is that is they're using to dive back into the past yeah um, and so now we are getting you know a new era and so then of course like there was ended up being black flag and then you've you know you fast forward to modern era and you've got origins and then odyssey and then valhalla uh, and so as a whole though, so this, if you know, we mentioned it last episode, but this matchup is Assassin's Creed three versus fable two, um, assassins. And the problem with picking an Assassin's Creed game is it's like the first three are good, but you know, they're more legendary in my opinion for launching this very long IP but then you mm -hmm. fast forward, you know, love a lot of people loved Black Flag. A lot of people did like Assassin's Creed 3. You know, I remember distinctly my friend Newbie playing it and me watching him, you know, as he's sneaking around and stabbing the colonials, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, um, you know, like in today's world, like the formula for AC has changed a bit. Like, you know, they're doing these open world you know, quest based systems with freedom to explore. And, uh, of course, origin started that Odyssey arguably perfected it. And then Valhalla kind of was a little less enjoyable than those two. Um, but you know, they're putting a heavy emphasis on the story. So anyway, Assassin's Creed three, like I said, was the one set in colonial, times um so the colonial usa's you know like new york the east coast basically yeah it's like boston concord it's basically yes massachusetts most of it yeah so i mean that's kind of the short of it it's it's not the most memorable one in the trilogy or the trilogy the the france the franchise but at the end of the day what this game is matched up what any of these would have been matched up with is fable 2 and do you want to talk us through the legendary nature of Fable 2? 
Sure, let me touch on Assassin's Creed 3, though. <laughs> okay. So Assassin's Creed 3 is the game that I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> and it is, it has made this even harder for me because it, it was, or maybe is, one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games. And that might be a shock to some people because, well, Black Flag came right after yeah. Assassin's Creed 3. Like, and while I, yeah. while I did love Black Flag... I hundred percent it almost Assassin's Creed three. Hmm. There was something about that story and the environments. It could have just been one of those games that just fell into the right place in my life in the right time. That because my sister lived in Boston, went to uh, get her doctorate in Boston, and so I would go up to visit occasionally and got to. Love the city in area of Boston. She got married in Concord. So I got to see a lot of the environment. And it wasn't like, oh, wow, this is like me. You know, I'm like, it's you. I'm like, oh, and then the machine is called Animus. That's the. Yeah, um, okay, there it is. Uh, but I I just love that game. Maybe it was the, the Native American spin on, uh, on the assassin. Uh, Spoiler alert if you haven't played Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you could have you, you could have substituted any of the <clears throat> later Assassin's Creed games that I haven't finished yet, like Origins and Odyssey, which I think are probably better games. But <clears throat> They're just me, more Assassin's modern, Creed, though, you know? Like yeah, that's... Assassin's Creed 3 <sighs> for me was... Uh, I'll always remember that game kind of fondly. So, <clears throat> but like I mentioned last week, I think Fable Two was the reason I originally bought a Fable. Uh, sorry, a Fable Three Sixty, a Xbox Three Sixty. So, <laughs> for you, it was uh, a Fable Three Sixty. <laughs> yeah, it was a Fable Three Sixty. In fact, I bought my first Xbox in Providence, Rhode Island. So, while I was visiting my sister, who before she moved to Boston lived in Providence. Uh, that's where she got her master's degree. So, uh, <clears throat> and I don't know why I waited to buy a 360 and managed to just pick one up in Providence, Rhode Island, but I did. Uh, <laughs> maybe it was the display for Fable 2, um, and it just got me at that moment, or I was just caught up in the whirlwind of fun adventure and decided, well, oh, I'm going to pick up a Xbox 360 get this fable game <laughs> uh but for me this this really kind of has to go to fable 2 because it it was that awe-inspiring game that i hadn't really um both graphically at the time it was pretty brilliant yeah. and it probably it still holds up i think um it's argue. It's like the best Fable game too. Like, yeah, and Fable Three was just. I mean, I played it, but it wasn't nearly as good as Fable Two. It, it just has this beautiful charm, and it makes me both excited and a little bit apprehensive of the new Fable that might be coming out. Oh yeah, like like probably most Fable fans are probably like, oh, I'm excited, but we'll see. Um, because it does, it just, it's a, Fable 2 is just such a perfect game. It really was. And uh, I'm going to have to, me personally, I'm going to have to give it to Fable 2 on this one. Uh, if you put it against the entire catalog of Assassin's Creed games, which we're not, so yeah. you can't yeah. you can't do that, um, then of course Assassin's Creed would win. But I don't in this think... particular ca case, uh, even though I, uh, even though Assassin's Creed Three might be my favorite Assassin's Creed, I'm still gonna have to give it to Fable Two because that that little RPG is kind of a nugget in in history of just a perfect little mm -hmm. fun, whimsical, but yet uh, just it's just a good RPG, just beautiful still to this day. Yeah. Like, I don't think they have made... Did they make a remastered version of this one? Or was it the uh, first one? Or something that I'm thinking of. I don't think they've remastered yeah, it. I don't see anything on the wiki. Um, I don't think there is a single AC game that could go... 
mono a mono with Fable 2 for the sake of this matchup and win. I think for me it would probably be one of the newer ones or the original. And the original Black flag maybe. Yeah. But Just like even sailing, still but... like we're talking like Fable 2 is a pretty important game in the fantasy space but mo but huge for xbox because that yeah. is like all i mean it got me to buy an xbox so <laughs> and that's all and th now we're here so uh, yeah I, otherwise uh, we're probably not here because i i just, i could have bought a playstation 3 yeah. or whatever at that point i already had a 2 that was the last console i had was a 2 so yeah i could have been a soy boy i guess i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but and here we are world, it would have been different um, probably not but i think it's also important to note that like some of the stuff that fable 2 did was pretty fantastic like the animation the wiki oh, here yeah. is saying like you know the fable 2 features trees with branches and leaves that are individually animated according mm -hmm. to their own physics so each tree has roughly like one hundred and twenty thousand leaves and then on top of that there were around 15 million poppies in albion which is the the world mm -hmm. you know both interactive and non-interactive cutscenes, um and so it's just like you know it it was you know so xbox had morrowind and that was kind of the big fantasy rpg and then fable comes out i don't know the timeline on those two specifically Mm -hmm. Fable's big, and then Fable Two comes out and basically perfects Fable One, and then you know we don't talk about Fable Three, but um, you know it's just my pick is Fable Two as well. Like it is the iconic fantasy RPG that Xbox has had, and like you said, like I'm looking forward to this new one. Mm -hmm. I really want to. Like, I want to do an episode of this show on that as it releases and maybe do a comparison look at the, at just, because it's been, how long has it been since a Fable game has come out? It's, uh, oh, gosh, see. 10 years, 12 years. Fable Fortune is, doesn't count. That's a card game. No. Fable okay. Anniversary. That was the remaster of the first one. Oh, so okay. the first one, actually, Fable Fable 1, or just Fable, did come out in 2004, which I think it might be right before Morrowind came out. Um, mm -hmm. But then Fable 2 is 2008, and then 3 is 2010. So as far as, like, mainline games coming out, like... 13 years, 14 it's been, years. We're going on 14 years. Yeah, that's, well, that's pretty wild. Long time. So. But that's yeah. it. I'm giving it to Fable. I think it's a... Uh, it's definitely earned it, and um, yeah, it's yep. it's it's an iconic it's, thing. So it's a good pick there, Sparrow. Yes, next matchup is going to be another very challenging one, mm. and this is Fallout New Vegas versus Mass Effect. It's going to be very challenging Ooh. for me because the original like Mass one or yeah, two, the original Mass Effect. So Mass Effect One, mm -hmm. okay, because okay, <laughs> and so for me it's going to be hard because uh, the aforementioned newbie is a huge fan of Mass Effect, and everything I know about Mass Effect and everything is because of him. But then Fallout New Vegas is like what many people would consider the best Fallout game. I had to sip my tea for dramatic pause. <laughs> I I am also like I really liked it. So this it'll be an interesting matchup, maybe a lot closer than this one or our um what was that one? The Mario Kart versus Halo 2. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that didn't stand a chance. <laughs> well, yeah, I love I love Mario Kart, but <laughs> Halo 2 wins every day. So uh that yeah. Next episode not next episode. I don't know. Whenever we do this segment again, Fallout New Vegas versus Mass Effect. So now, let's get into holiday events in video games. I have entitled this episode, Tis the Season Part 2, 
Last episode was Tis the Season Part 1, and if you haven't listened to that one yet, you probably need to to get some context for this episode or this discussion because in that episode we talked the things we lo- want to see in holiday events, the things we don't want to see, um, more big picture stuff regarding holiday events in video games, mostly live service games. So in this episode, we're going to maybe take the microscope out and peer into games specifically and specific events that we love uh, and just talk about them. Have a good old-fashioned fireside chat with a cup of tea or what are those, uh, an old-fashioned, what's the, no, hot hot toddy. toddy. That's the one, thank you. So, um, we can kind of do this however you want, Shiloh. You want to just take turns going off different games and just go there or do you want to draw yeah, out think, of a straw hat or do you want i think so i have a okay. few little wrinkles or questions to kind of throw at you and, okay. and myself to kind of um sprinkle it along so it's not necessarily just tit for tat back and forth <laughs> um, well do you want to kick it off then do uh sure to, do you want to well kick let's it off, start sir? let's start with the king <laughs> and uh, it is the king like it's and it is literally the yeah. king, and it is figuratively, and uh, it is totally the king of, of all holiday events that I have ever played in MMO, which is the Mad King Festival for Guild Wars 2, which is uh, currently ongoing, yep. and I did jump back in to uh, check out what had changed. Uh, there are a few cosmetic uh, weapon changes that you can get that are interesting. Uh, the biggest thing that they added was a Shiloh proof uh, <laughs> clock tower, <laughs> which is, if you're not familiar with the clock tower jumping puzzle that uh, our friend Cash is the king of, evidently. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. Uh, it is a ju- jumping puzzle where the floor is lava. So the, <laughs> the you're trying to c- climb up this clock tower with fragments of of the clock tower that are just scattered around spinning spiraling around. up there <laughs> and it's just spinning and the floor is this green uh gas it's basically you have you know you can't really buy time like you you just have to go 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 or the or the gas will keep you know kill you and you'll have to start over or just mm-hmm. get frustrated and leave like i i did um <laughs> <laughs> but I, I managed to, to do it because they they took that element out. And it's so it's just a easier version of the clock tower. Uh, I'm sure the rewards aren't as good, but it makes people that maybe not totally confident in their jumping because you have to be pretty confident in what you're doing mm-hmm. in that thing to even get up a few levels on it. So... That was the biggest change that I noticed. They still had the Labyrinth, which is a lot of fun. They still had Matt Kingthorne issuing all of his commands and funny little offhand Simon comments. Simon says, yeah. Yeah. Over like, in Matt Lars. King says, it's, it's just a really good event all around. Like, all the different activities, the yeah, way they... so many different activities. The way it's all decorated, Lion's Arches decorated. Yes. Even, yeah. even all of overland Tyria has a certain um feel to it and then mm-hmm. there are events out in the world that will just pop up yeah so the the halloween like doors that you can open up and things like that which i really I, that should have been so. a should have been a um another point of contention from last episode was i really enjoy seeing not just in a particular location because i I think that that's important for especially for early players that you can actually just go to lion's arch you don't have to get to or you don't have to get to cantha or you know any place like that to to participate in these things you can just go and you you can be a level 15 or i don't remember what the the earliest you can participate you can't just make a Brand you new might be able to just hop in the lab. Maybe a lot of times they have like level ten, or you know, you have to be so certain kind of like semi-established to be able to participate in a lot of this stuff. But yeah. the fact that they just have these overland activities that will just pop up throughout all of the world makes it just 
that more exciting because you're not really restricted to, well, I guess I'm just going to sit here in this city for a week and a half and that's what I'll be doing <laughs> in the game. You can at least go out and do stuff. And ESO was good about that too, where you had their, their witches yes. festival yeah. um, was very, I should have put that on the list too. Cause that's um, anyway, but that, that is another good one where you, get your candy skulls or whatever they are um in eso's event by doing dungeons and world bosses and stuff like that so it, incorporating the activities outside of the actual activity center is kind of cool that they it gives you more diversity and when you get sick of being <laughs> in <laughs> halloween land you can just go okay i'm just going to go out and do stuff but at least you get a little bit of the flavor mm -hmm. along with it so but yeah, this this uh, Mad King Festival is just it's just it's hard to beat because there's just so many different activities. What we got the clock tower, you got the labyrinth, which is basically just an ongoing, uh, almost like dungeon crawl adventure kind of thing where you yeah. just form up groups and go around and kill stuff and harvest candy corn little rocks that are around and um, there's a what else is there? Um, well, there's the Simon Says. There's the yeah. racetrack in like the wheat or pumpkin field oh, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. That's fun. Yes. And you've got like, if that has like a Springer race, a Roller Beetle race, and a um, Jackal race, I think are the three. Maybe there's a fourth jackal? one, Raptor. Yeah, there's a Jackal one. Oh, wow. Um, And the interesting thing is, so I need to go back in while this event's still going on. But when, when it first came around, when we were first playing the game, I think the only mount I actually had would have been the Raptor, maybe the Springer. But I definitely didn't have the Jackal or the uh, Roller Beetle at the time. So yeah, interesting to see now that I've actually got hundreds of hours of experience you know, in the game, <laughs> the difference, but... Mm -hmm. yeah um and then there's like that little dungeon uh or rather group like raid activity that you can do where you fight the mad king um, yeah i like that one too i don't know what else i think that's all i mean that's a good amount of activities well, there's, <laughs> so. yeah there's the little um thing where you can throw yourself in the cauldron or you can do the um oh yeah the, like fighting and stuff like uh, yeah the little uh not not minion fighting that's a wow thing but the uh like pet fighting the costume yeah, brawl right. yeah the the, the costume, costume brawl yep. uh there's that little element going on i didn't i didn't check to see if there was a quest like the book like that little like the book quest from last year i didn't check to see if there's a new quest but yeah but anyway yeah this is kind of the the king of uh Halloween events is Guild Wars 2 at mm -hmm. King Festival. I ended up doing, just to prove a point to our friend Metallus, I went in. I hadn't, obviously haven't done the clock tower since last year. So I, I load up the game, immediately teleport to Lion's Arch, immediately find the clock tower door. <laughs> Unlike Shiloh, I choose the hard version because that is who I am. And I get in there. And I immediately do it five times in a row without failing. And then my the session, that was like the most I could even do in that the multiplayer session I was in. And then I just left and I was like, yep, still king of the castle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> king of the clock tower. <laughs> so it was good. I mean, it, that is probably, I think I mentioned it last episode or something. I think I like the Winter's Day jumping puzzle more. It's longer, uh, you know, but like the clock tower is very good. It's one of my favorites. So, yeah, that's Mad King. And, and we could also, you know, kind of segue into Winter's Day as well, because the Winter's Day, if Mad King Festival is like the king of all holiday festivals in any game, then Winter's Day is right up there, too, because there is yeah. an equal amount of stuff to do i mean you've got like a bell carol ling activity you've got like tower <laughs> defense you've got this 10 man like strike mission you've got um 
I think like a PvP snowball fight. You've got the jumping puzzle. You know, there's a ton of stuff to do for that, and that's just in that little crown pavilion. Like you've also got the Christmas gifts and everything yeah. to children. So yeah, the yeah the the orphan um, mm -hmm. run uh, the um, and then there's like flying around and getting all the candy canes or is it or am I making that up? <laughs> I I don't know. Am I getting what confused? Did we do with, that? There was another. There's like a an event where you go around the city. Um, maybe that's for. There was the crystals for the. Uh, season of the Four Winds Festival that you would get or well, use a sky scale to get around in. Yeah, there there was an event like that for um, that was in. Um, crap. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's it's just skipped his memory. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm thinking of a different event. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there, there is a Dolyak um, thing where you follow them around and then the little script come it's a, it's an event though like oh, when yeah. and they they kind of drop presents and you pick up the presents and you try to kick the screw away it always kind of made me laugh yes because you don't really hurt them you just like punt them <laughs> they just go fl <laughs> flying and there is also a roller beetle race in uh divinity's reach for winter's day that mm -hmm. one's that one's hard actually I, I don't think it is roller beetle i think it's just a Ra just you know, race. whatever mount but yeah, the people would... that can do it on roller beetle are like yeah that's they're that's great. hard yeah it's very challenging uh but you also get an achievement if you walk the whole thing <laughs> and it's pretty lengthy, i did that so. i did that i still need to maybe i'll do that this year so yeah but winter's day is another very very good one because it it feels like christmas like it divinity's reach is just all decked out and snow and there's snowman and it's just it's just fun yeah that's a good one it is a good one okay what about you, you did mention elder scrolls online but we mm. both have the same favorite one and i do agree though that the witches festival is good um but the jesters festival is the one that feels most like an actual like Here's some silly activities you can do, you know, with mm -hmm. the uh, fireworks. And then I think there is that the one with the pies or the apples or something that you throw at people. Yeah, you, you go to the opposing factions, um, yep. queen, king, yeah, and throw pie at their face and their guards. And it's it's a lot of fun. And then there's, uh, <laughs> depending on your faction, they have different races that kind of pretend to be the 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 king or the queen of of their of their opposite opposing faction um yes and they're funny <laughs> yeah it's just it's a fun and and it is one of those spring type festivals where it's not just all pastels and flowers and bunny rabbits and just like oh god no not this but it's just it's just more fun like there's yes. just stuff to do and it it feels like spring but it's not farting pastels all over your face and mm -hmm. just yeah and uh, from a very like gameplay uh or like i guess meta perspective like it was very good for getting motifs for various fashion you know stuff in that game um, oh yeah, yeah. So you get what, rewarded with the coffers, yeah. Was right? it was it just yeah? Was that the one where I basically just camped in Vivek City and did crafting rits, or is that a different festival? I can't. That's remember. something. I think that's, that's something else. else. Okay. Where you get yeah. double rits? Maybe it's part of it. I don't know. I just distinctly remember. Might, like, might be something different. I can't. Yeah, like this is kind of the difference between ESO's approach and Guild Wars Two. So Guild Wars Two wants you to go to this location and see the festivities you know mm -hmm. uh, and then like you said like some of the some of them have stuff you can do outside of that main area you know like with pumpkins or like the presents that you could find during winter's day eso takes the opposite approach where there's very little to do in the actual like event area where they put the tent because they want you, they'll, they'll reward you while this event's going on with stuff for doing other game activities. 
Yeah. Now, I don't think... I think I prefer... Personally, I prefer the Guild Wars 2 method because you do get more of that, like fe- like I said in last episode, like Halloween or Christmas throw up all over, which I enjoy, as opposed mm-hmm. to ESO where it's, oh, there's this little small thing, but we're going to reward you for just playing the game like you normally would. So I think that's a respectable approach too because... You yeah, know, they're you, both as good. I, they have their merits for both. Yeah, for sure. I prefer Guild Wars Two, but I appreciate because I, I mean, like I mentioned before, when they can sprinkle those elements into, well, okay, I'm done yep. with, I'm done with this area. I just want to go out and do stuff, but still get rewarded for that. Is very Elder Scrolls Online, where you can yes. kind of, you know, do your normal thing, but you still get rewarded you know you feel feel like you're part of this festival rather than just saying man bah humbug and going and <laughs> killing x monster over and over again but yep that's the that's the way that like again in my opinion ESO filters you into doing hard veteran or trial content because that's really the only thing that ma- like your gear doesn't matter unless you're there um, the storyline is, you know, people love Elder Scrolls lore, good for them. Uh, so that's why I think, like, it's it's good that they took that route because if you were, if, like, if the game was going to make you stay in a specific area to do random activities and the rewards weren't useful or, like, even if they were just motifs... Like, most players that were doing vet dungeons and stuff, like, you're not going to go spend time doing that because you're not getting anything out of it that's helping you with the game. Whereas in um, Guild Wars 2, like, you go to this, you can do motifs, but, like, the game is built around that sort of player interaction, doing fun stuff. Like, you mm-hmm. know, most of us in Guild Wars 2 have are using the same gear for, like, the past, like, year or six months, or for those who are playing for a long time, like five to ten years. ESO, yeah. you know, if I need a piece of gear out of this dungeon and I've got groups that are willing to run it, I'm not going to go and hang out in a event area. So the fact that I could then go do that dungeon and be rewarded because the holiday event's going on, like they made the right decision on that, I think. So. Yeah, because of the way, yeah, the way the game is structured. Yep. There's really just two well three other games on on our list really if you if you look at the list and ones uh, that are yeah very notable like that we're big fans of i mean i don't neither of us included destiny 2 i think destiny 2 does, i almost did yeah it's like an all right festival of festival of the lost and that is primarily probably a little bit of nostalgia but there are elements of that game's incorporation of the Halloween event that I did appreciate and that the number one I mentioned it last week or yeah the music changes mm-hmm. <laughs> as you fly into to the tower it's like doop 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 Decorating the tower, and yes, it's just the tower. It's not like an entire zone like a lot of MMOs have to contend with, or an entire city like Divinity Street or Lion's Arch, but it is, it, they do it well. And the fact that they give you little quests and, and things to do that interact with the NPCs around their world, albeit a little shrunk now, but back in the day, um, but yeah, you did have to go. I, I remember having to give Halloween candy to like Eris on the yeah. moon. And she gives the, in, a lot of the NPCs, yeah. they would give you treats and stuff. And Eris gives you a toothbrush <laughs> with a message, which I thought was hilarious. Um, just get, you know, in their little, rac- little interactions when you do these holly, uh, hol- Halloween and Christmas as well. The cookies. You know, Christmas, Christmas, you bake the cookies. Yeah, yeah. that was a lot of fun. I remember having to give Riven uh, a cookie, <laughs> which was interesting. I had to figure out how to do that, and I did. And that was really that's the first time I ever 
encounter driven. Yeah, because you um, have to go into the last wish. Mm -hmm. But there is a way to skip to Riven themselves. Yeah, so. with the with the puzzle mm -hmm. board. And I did that. That was really that was that was a quest within itself, which was a lot of fun. Um but yeah, the the way that they in the little Halloween masks where you can they're just paper yeah. mache masks that look like uh you know, shacks and I think one year it was Eris and like Gaul and yeah, yeah. You know, different little masks like that are kind of fun. I think uh, I think I wore my uh, Rahul mask the entire time because <laughs> you know because Rahul is Rahul. Yeah, yeah they're, they're nothing like to write home about. Like it's not something where I want. Like usually after the week, the first week, I'm like, Ugh, I'm sick of grinding for this. You know like this reward that you want or whatever yeah but i mean it's like good that they god roll on a certain gun that comes yeah. from the halloween event and it's, it's like, good oh. that they do something though i think yeah and it still feels in universe it feels in universe it doesn't feel totally out of place um you know i had looked up a bunch of other mmos that had halloween events like eve online i'm like what no like what <laughs> How how does that work? I don't get that yeah. at all. Like it just some of them I would just kind of scoff at and be like, right. no, 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 Razor's no, gonna. I don't think so, buddy. Sorry, listener. Razor seems to want to send me a notification right when we record every Sunday. I'm gonna figure out how to turn that off. I don't mm. need to know. I don't need a newsletter from Razor. Um, no. <laughs> without that distraction, though, I think the next one for me specifically is probably Overwatch. Now, I have some really good friends that I played over, like when I first bought an Xbox One, when I first got married, I did nothing but Overwatch for a good year and a half, until Fortnite, really. Like that was all I played was Overwatch, as far as multiplayer games go. And Overwatch, no matter what anyone's opinion is on the game currently, and it's, um, you know, Overwatch 2 state, they kind of dropped the ball, Blizzard did. Overwatch 1, or the OG Overwatch, did holiday events extremely well. Um, just like a full month of an extra game activity with skins and, you know, their own, like, not leaderboards, but like, Score, they're just like some challenges like Junkenstein's Revenge is a tower defense style mode where you're defending against waves of these rope omnics that are dressed up like Halloween characters mm -hmm. and then uh, it's PVE though so like it's four of you and they gave I don't know if they changed the when they changed this but originally you could only pick like four of the characters. So like they made you play as McCree. I think they made you play as Anna, um, made you play as like Torbjorn. And then there's like one other one or something. Because then while this is going on, you know, you're defending against these hordes and they're getting increasingly more challenging. You know, um, you're defending this door, by the way. And the enemy AI will come out playing as the heroes so like reaper will show up and you have to take him down roadhog will show up and you have to take him down and eventually you get to junk uh junk rat who is the hero this little australian guy with a grenade launcher but he's known as junkenstein and of course like it's the voice actor of reinhardt is saying this like i the knight of junkenstein's revenge and it just gets very into like this old mm -hmm classic like horror movie style and it was really well done um and it was just as fun to play that as it was the main you know pvp game uh but then christmas rolls around and they did the christmas event and that one was a snowball fight where everyone played the character the hero may and you got uh i think you could only load one at a time <laughs> but there were these snow piles on this map and you could suck up the snow and then you'd have one shot of a snowball to shoot and it was one shot elimination ton of fun <coughs> man i'm dying today but it was a ton <laughs> of fun and um so that was two in a row i was like this is great and then for the lunar new year or chinese new year whatever they called it they would do 
I don't know if they did like a specific game mode, but like they decorated maps and characters would get skins that were themed around this. Um, they did an anniversary event. They also, but the most important one for me was the Summer Games one, where they put out essentially their version of Rocket League, where you would play hmm. as Lucio in the stadium with a giant ball, and you'd have to use his, like, boop attack to try to hit this ball into the enemy goal. So in the normal game, I was never better than, like, a gold, which is, like, uh, what, like 2,000... 500 400 ish range or i think it's like 2000 to 2500 and then you get platinum um but in lucio ball i was at like 35 to 3700 like like the mass getting close to masters range because me and my two friends uh logan and wally that i'd play with like we were just we were just savants at this like just just smoking people and i've got clips of us you know like we'll we'll do like these passing plays and then score and we would always spray um like a little quote bubble is you know like other pvp games you can put sprays on walls like tags and stuff but mine was a like a quote bubble that just said oops and so i would do that because <laughs> as you're playing you get highlights and so everyone on that's playing can see like the game winning highlight or like the best play or something so it was always extra um, toxic to get a goal like that and then just see the oops. And then, you, you know, I was I was that type of person. So uh, but that's all I'll say about Overwatch. Like it was I don't I don't know what they're doing nowadays. Whatever. I'm sure the events are still going on because they did pretty well with them. But like originally that was it's not an MMO, but they did. They went 110 percent on it. So, hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, there are two from one game in particular that I had on the list, and that is Lord of the Rings Online. So it's no secret that I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. So, <laughs> are you sure? I don't think I've ever heard this before. <laughs> yeah, maybe once or twice. It's um, So having events in Middle Earth just feels natural. The, the Yule Festival in particular... Um, it just feels good. Like just going into Tolkien's world in Middle Earth and uh, around Christmas time, just with little hobbits running around, it just feels cool. Like it's just <laughs> nothing better. Yeah. So right there, it's just it's hard for me to beat. Plus, you get these little. You, you'll have people playing musical instruments that'll be playing Silent Night, and you know just these little characters that are forming little bands to do, you know, little choral arrangements and stuff. It's just, and they have reindeer and, you know, it just feels good. Hmm. It gives you, it gives you the warm fuzzies. And of course the, the other one that I mentioned was an un unorthodox one from last episode, which was Bilbo and Frodo's birthday, because it's nothing, Nothing more fun than getting to be a part of Bilbo and Frodo's mm -hmm. birthday and all the little events that they would have there to, you know, you could participate in. I can't remember all of them offhand, but there were a bunch of different little birthday cel celebratory things that you could do. It was just a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that, that was really the all I had. It was <clears throat> for, for what I didn't really get to participate in anything in my brief time and wow even though i well the dark moon fair maxed out which i oh, do yeah, want to give was fun yeah was i want to give credit to because it was again it's something and dark it's an moon ongoing fair, thing yeah it pops up once a month i think for a week mm -hmm. so it's been doing that for you know 20 years years yeah. but um the interesting thing about it is it has a bunch of different like mini activities you can do and so I, that is the type of event that I tend to enjoy more is where like, there's a bunch of different things you can do, um, mm. in the dark moon fair specifically, there was the Simon says that you could do, there's like multiple different difficulties of it. Um, there was, <laughs> you get launched out of a cannon and try to land in a ring in water, like, you know, just silly yeah. stuff like that. Or there was the, um, I don't know what they call that, that like 
bird race thing that you you hop on the little bird mount and then go through this the rings and all that Mm -hmm. um yeah there's just like all these little tiny things or like there was a i think you played like with tanks and you tried to blow up another tank or something like just weird (laughs) wacky stuff yeah i remember that and then there was the um the wolf that would pop out yes. of the yeah, like a world. I boss actually got style. it the little mount from that. Oh, you did. That's right. Yeah, I got the little howler or whatever his name was. I can't remember his name. Yeah, but, yeah. He would go all, <laughs> and a little oh, moon would pop over the, his head. Um, we did the Valentine's Day one. That was where you would go do yeah. that. Like it wasn't that very. Was, there wasn't much, but it was like a weird little Valentine's Day like mini dungeon that you would do and yeah that was okay yeah it was man but like the rewards and stuff like i remember stark got the love rocket <laughs> little mount i think it was of course he did of course he did so yeah they did i mean so yeah we can't really speak to their other holiday events i'm, I'm not no, sub to the game and i'm not going to just to play the halloween event to see what it's like no. but um i guess the one we'll end on is final fantasy 14 and yeah. um i don't it's nothing like to write home about, I don't think. Really, I have I have yet to do the because it just what came up on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have yet to do it. Uh, the one I can speak of is the Starlight Festival from okay. last year, uh, which was good, and they actually Tempest was explaining this to me that uh, as a dumb North American. <laughs> it, <laughs> Halloween is not really recognized throughout the rest of the world, uh, oh, mainly just okay. in North and Middle America, really. Uh, just us in Mexico, I guess, or, you know, the... Interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, so Halloween is not really a big deal. Um, and since Square Enix isn't a North American company, yeah, it just makes sense that they wouldn't really celebrate it that much. Um, hmm. So, but Christmas is kind of, you know, winter festivals and stuff is an age old tradition, tradition yeah. in pretty much all the world. So winter's or sorry, uh, Starlight Festival is a lot of fun. I, re- I just remember it from the little, um, the quest, mainly the quest that I went on to get my little emperor squirrel that sits on my shoulder and eats his little <laughs> walnut. <laughs> Yeah, because he's really cute, but it's a it's a fun little quest. It involves a little a little baby yeti, and it's nice. just yeah, it, it takes you to different locations, and it kind of gives you rewards along the way. And you know, w- in typical Final Fantasy fashion, there are people dressed up in God knows what, it, for anywhere from Santa Claus to sexy claws to <laughs> you know just uh, it's all over the map but it, it is a lot of fun because the community kind of makes it even more fun just because of the the craziness that goes on mm-hmm. but it is in uh i think it starts in old gradania too so i guess a lot of their festivals start there um because tempest was saying that the the little halloween event for for this year it starts in old Grenadina, or maybe i looked that up it's but, uh, yeah i did part of it it's it's in the like Grenadina, the city area yeah it's hard to call that a city but it is <laughs> you know whatever yeah. so, so it's fun it was just like i'm not done with it it's like a quest it's it's nothing like to write home about but mm-hmm. then again like as you mentioned the halloween is kind of a u.s specific yeah, holiday it's just mostly. second thought to them i think so just to kind of appease us westerners i suppose yeah. and i've got so much else to do in final fantasy 14 that i'm it's it doesn't bother me that i'm like eh, whatever you know i'll just yeah get this done and then go back to leveling so mm-hmm. uh the last one that i wanted to call out before we wrapped things up and i just wanted to give a brief mention of it because I think we did mention it last episode, but that was the Fosnacht festival in yeah. fallout 76. And so I, I know that I mentioned that it's a real festival in real life in Helvetia, West Virginia. Um, ever since it came out in the game, it has 
influence the real festival in the real world to where people are bringing fallout themed costumes and masks and uh to it Mm -hmm. but i loved it because it was very simple you literally just protect these goofy dressed robots (laughs) as they march through helvetia and you fight Mm -hmm. off waves of enemies um you need to keep them all alive in order to get the best rewards uh, and then at the end, there is like a like a sheep squatch, I think it was, that spawns yeah, like that you have to kill. Mega, it's like a mega sloth at some point, and yes. then sometimes it's a sheep. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. And then you, oh yeah, the sheep squatch or the mega sloth or. Yeah. I think that was it, right? Yeah. Uh, but then he, anyway, at the end, you know, it ends right in front of the church where there's the giant effigy of Father Winter that you light on fire and burn, and then you get your little rewards. But there's just the music is like burned into my head. Dun 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 dun. So dumb, but but yeah, it's so dumb. It's fun. Yeah, the rewards were fun too. Is you you could get these goofy looking masks, uh, and the they had the advantage. You know, everything's tradable in that game, and so you could trade those, and some of them were worth a lot of caps in game because they were rare drops so it gave me a little taste of like what runescape used to do and um big respect to that but yeah that's that's pretty much gonna do it for holiday events in video games you have anything else you want to add at all shiloh no i was trying to think of honorable mentions but i think we covered those in in destiny 2 and you just covered the fallout 76 definitely definitely that one the flashlight event but it's uh yeah, some of the older games kind of escaped me. I know EverQuest 2 had some that were probably good at one point, but I just don't remember them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so RuneScape's um, the same way. Like, it's events pre-2011, like, you know, when they actually would do quests and then drop these little trinkets or items. Like, everybody would do them, and everybody would play with those trinkets, and um, obviously, like, for RuneScape, the original Christmas event is what drops party hats, which are the most valuable item in the entire game. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, Christmas crackers, but you would crack open Christmas crackers to get the party hats, and so for the people who didn't, they have an item that is basically um, invaluable, but yeah, that type of stuff, like... You know, that's just the days of old. Like in today's world, they're, I think these live service games, like when they come out, they know, like, yep, we're going to have to do some sort of like festival for holidays. Like it's just, it's, it's part of the gaming culture now, you know, to Uh, hop in and do that stuff. Like Fortnite, I think, has done, um, I remember like on Christmas Day, this would have been, before they added actual snow to the map, I think it was, um, they did on Christmas Day, the entire map was covered in snow. So that's one little minor thing, but, you know, they did for, I want to say Halloween, they did a, like a weird, like zombie version of the game. So I don't know that I could be making that up. I don't, or I could be making up that it was for Halloween, but I definitely remember it. So, yeah, that pretty much covers holiday events and games. I mean, this is uh, something that comes up every year, multiple times a year, <laughs> these these sort of fun little distractions. Uh, and it's just a testament to how much gaming has become, like, its own culture and uh, just its own th- I remember when I was a kid, my parents were like, yeah, video games, they're dumb. Like, they'll never take off, you know. It's just a distraction and nowadays it's the biggest entertainment medium in the entire world, I would argue. So maybe like you could put movies or music, but those are so one dimensional when video games literally has both those elements to it. So that's why they're called yep. video games. So, well, next episode, Shiloh, I think uh-huh. we should begin our Final Fantasy 14 journey. Um, through Eorzea. I don't know what that's going to look like. We're going to have multiple episodes on Final Fantasy XIV. Probably a little bit about the world and what. Uh, maybe we should just talk about the eras of the game too, because it's 
changed so much or certainly changed from launch to a realm reborn but um mm -hmm. yeah we'll we'll be starting our we've already started playing but we want to kind of start our journey or for me like what it's like actually diving into this game for the first time so yeah any yeah, uh, any thoughts on that no it, it'll be fun um especially to get your feedback like honest feedback on uh what it's been like so far because mm -hmm. i know that uh, it's <laughs> it's uh, a little hit or miss for a lot of people sometimes yeah. a miss sometimes a big hit um but i'm always one to say well it's just temper your just expectations and just keep going and yeah <laughs> just keep going just keep going there uh Keep Comrade. going there, son. All Keep right. Keep going there, Tinderfoot. Well, we'll kick it off next episode with some Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I think yeah. there's only six episodes left for this year, and then we'll, Oof. we're will we going to pause for Thanksgiving and then pause for Christmas, and then we'll start a whole new season, if you want to call it that, in 2024. But thank you for listening. Thanks for giving us an hour and some change of your day, and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Peace. Later. Deuces. Questing the Multiverse is brought to you in part by Conniff Productions, Howes Wood Designs, and Joel Crawford. To follow along with our adventures, please follow us on Twitter at QTM Podcast and consider joining our Discord, the link of which can be found in the show notes or in our Twitter bio. Want your questions or comments read on the show? Email us at questingthemultiverse at gmail.com. Finally, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a review or a follow wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for listening.